Hello, and welcome to Initial Nitrogen Sampling, Creating Sample Points in Pioneer Field 360 Studio Software. Today we're going to talk about the basic process to pull soil samples for the nitrogen service. First we're going to talk about how to create sample points in Pioneer Field 360 Studio Software. Next we'll talk about exporting those points to a mobile software. After that, how to navigate to sample points using that mobile software. And finally, how do we collect the soil samples? First of all, why are we pulling these soil samples? We find that it's important to collect the initial nitrogen levels in the soil before any nitrogen application has occurred to set the model on the right path. During the 2014 beta, we found that when we set the field level initial values correctly, it improved the accuracy of the model greatly. The basic process will be this. We'll want to cover 40 acres per sample. The exception will be on 10 acres per sample for fields that either have been manured or will be manured in the next year. The samples will be pulled at 24 inch depths, 10 cores per sample, and this will be prior to any nitrogen application. To get started, open up Pioneer Field 360 Studio software and navigate to the operation, farm, and field you wish to work on. Make sure the year is set to 2015. If that operation does not have a 2015 instance, click on the three dot button right below the year and add a new crop year as 2015. This will roll the year forward uh, from 2014 to 15 and put us in the right uh, crop year. All right, let's go ahead and create some sample points. While I've got the uh, field selected as corning, which is the field I'm going to work on, my next step is to go up to the layers pull down menu, select create a new layer, and then also create a new site layer. Here I will start out by loading a template. Load template and I will click on initial nitrogen points. Click OK to save that. To name the, the layer I will name this 2015 initial nitrogen points. This is key. This is very crucial for us to have this exactly spelled this way. When we go to pull the sample point data out for the crop model, it's going to look for this particular string, this phrase. 2015, capital N I in initial, capital N in nitrogen, capital P in points. Layer type, we'll, we will set this to soil type. Soil test, I should say. The soil test will set the collected date to the date you think you'll be pulling the soil samples. This can be edited at a later time, so get as close as you can. This is also a, a, an important piece of data for the model to use. We need to know the exact date when the soil test samples were pulled. On lab, select a &L, Tennessee. If you click the Attributes tab, you'll see that there is a sample ID with a nominal data use. That was loaded from the initial nitrogen points layer template. Click OK. So as you see over here on the left hand side in the, in the resources, we've now created a new 2015 initial nitrogen points layer. We still need to populate it though. So let's go back up to the layer pull down menu. Select layer editor. We have the layer editor window dialog up here. We can add a grid to the layer uh, or to the screen to help guide our sampling points. Remember, we need to be uh, placing one sample for every 40 acres approximately. We can click on the Show Grid button and a grid will appear across the field. If we want to move that grid, we can click on the Move Grid button and it highlights. You move to the center of the grid. You can move that to where you see it's fit and those pink lines will denote where the grid edges are at. Turn that back off. We can just click on the move grid. We'll want to set our cell width and height to 1320 feet each. That is uh, the size for 40 acres. For 10 acres, the size needs to be set to 660 feet. Okay, we'll go over here and click on new site to start adding points. 
using the background layer, uh, imagery layer, navigate and place a sample point where you see as a very good representative spot in the field. Make sure you place the sample points in place away from ditches or tree lines. Common sense. We're trying to get a base layer, base levels of the soils, of nitrogen levels. So place them in places that are representative, not too obscure. Okay, we've got those points labeled and sampled or are created. Let's go ahead and click Save there. All right, and then we can close out the layer editor. We've now created a set of sample points. Next, we need to build this into a work order. So we'll go up to the Fertility pull-down menu, go to Sampling Work Order, and it pulls up here. A few things we want to point out. Number one, the area per sample. Set that to 40 acres. Again, if we're doing regular sampling, 10 acres if we're doing uh, manure fields. Extra labels. If we think there needs to be an extra label or two printed, we can add that there. Over here on Soil Lab, we should see a &L Labs Tennessee, but going into it, let's look at it a little further. Click on the properties. We're going to see account number. That needs to be set to 2903. That is the proper account number for all the work we're doing here. We need to have S1M and nitrate N, and in the future we'll also have ammonium N to check as well. Those three need to be checked. Click OK. OK. So let's start adding these, sam these uh, soil sample points to our work order. So here I've got under the corning field, the 2015 initial nitrogen point selected. I'm going to go up here and click and select that as a layer. And you see it came into the system. I'm going to go and add the other ones. Here's one at the Algona field. And down at the Pella field. And finally down at the Sheldahl field. There we go. We have the four fields we wish to put into a work order that we're going to go pull samples for on this operation. As you can tell, we have the sample points set to four. We have the lab set there. We also have a hash ID that's used to identify each field going to a &L, uh, labs. Next, we can click on the create a work order button. That works a little bit in the background, but it builds it all together as a work order. Next, we can click on the preview bag labels. What this does is generates our set of labels to put on the bags. You can use Avery 8160 labels. There are three by 10 on the sheet, so 30 uh, labels per sheet. Get that at uh, any Office Max or office, uh, any of the office stores there. Uh, be able to print your labels onto the ba uh, for the bags. Next, we also have the preview labs middle sheet. Click on this to generate the, the preview of the lab submittal sheets. This is important to send along with the, uh, with the samples to a &L Labs. This is a way they can check the samples in. Uh, the barcode over here, the, the QR code here, uh, contains all the information about these samples so that when it's read in by a &L, they can automatically have all this information populated in their system. Very important to have with the samples. Okay. So now we have created the work order. We've gone ahead and created the sample points. We can also click on the preview field sheet and also the preview master sheet if necessary. Those are a couple extra uh, reports that can be created to help check out uh, the work that you're doing in the field.